Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Matt Stores, and welcome to Matt's Planning. On today's episode, I have an expert who is going to talk about their area of expertise, and I'm very excited to talk with them. Expert, please introduce yourself and tell us what you're an expert on. Hi, my name's Hayden Crystal, and I am, I don't know if I would go so far in general to say expert, for but for the purposes of this podcast, I will say that I am an expert in horses. I've got six horses right now. I've had horses, we've had them for about 15 years. I've been riding for about 20. That's excellent. My understanding of horses is that it is an ancient animal, goes back all the way to the time of the dinosaurs, at least some iteration, not necessarily the ones that you would see today. They were much smaller, kind of like dog size at that time. You can kind of imagine proportionally the Jurassic period mammals of the time, maybe like a very small monkey riding on this dog-sized horse or some sort of rat sort of thing. Kind of like if you've seen the movie Labyrinth and the, how the dog is used in that, kind of that sort of dynamic. But as time progressed, they evolved throughout the world, but predominantly in North America and Antarctica. And the ones in America actually migrated around the world and then inevitably, well, no, maybe not inevitably, but eventually became extinct in North America. So by the time of settlement of North America by Europeans, when they started bringing horses back, it's one of the first instances in world history where a animal was reintroduced to a place where it had been extinct before, but they didn't know what they were doing. They just thought that was going to be easy, would help them with their development, heavy air quotes, with that development word of their new colonies in in the Americas. Another thing that has kind of come in with horses over the years is the debate between camels and horses about what is the work animal, what is the better one to keep. And I think that it's been pretty decisively resolved that camels are just really, really finicky animals. A lot of times have a very bad personality. Plus, they're about three times the size of most horses, at least in weight. And so they're a little bit harder to keep and maintain. But there are a number of camels that have been released throughout the United States that have joined into the packs of wild horses. They've been welcome into the packs of wild horses in the Southwest. A lot of people will say that they've seen these desert camels and these desert horses going around and just basically raiding uh, small towns, mostly ghost ghost towns at this point, they'll go through and just completely decimate it. The idea of the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse actually has some connection to these roving horses kicking up sand and just going around and destroying whatever they could in villages, whether it be pots, whether it be windows as time progressed, and that dust kicking up, making people feel ill, making it harder to see. But the fact that horses is notoriously known to being very friendly with other animals and really, really like not necessarily a king. I don't necessarily monarchy mentality in the animal kingdom. I guess it is a kingdom, but they are very communal. They are a, a force for good and that a lot of the ecosystem kind of revolves around them. And then in terms of the riding of horses, the uses of horses in the domestic life and what have you. I think that horses are a really, really wonderful animal that can really cause a lot of trouble and conflict for little kids, specifically me when I first rode a horse and didn't understand what chafing was and didn't really know how to communicate what that was because it was like, oh no, like this isn't going as well. But what that has let me understand as I've gotten older is the importance of good pants. And as somebody who has pretty big thighs, muscular thighs, I have really considered in the last couple of years getting breeches, or breeches? riding pants because of the very well-made nature of them and just going for kind of that equestrian look in my day-to-day -day life because I wouldn't have to worry about my pants splitting or like wearing down because of rubbing or anything like that. So kind of that idea of, oh, I had this horrible chafing incident when I was a kid has led to me being a little bit more amenable to horses or at least 
the clothing connected to him as I've grown up. Based on what you've heard so far, about how much of that would you say was accurate? I would say that there's little little roots of truth. There's okay. little seeds of truth that seemed like it got telephoned a couple different times through maybe not the most reliable sources. I will say, though, if you just asked me what else I rode, this would be every first date I've ever had with a man. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you, do you have more you'd like to share with me? Oh, no. What? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the extent of my understanding of horses, if I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it into the history of horses, which I think is really cool. I had to Google it. I didn't know this offhand, but it looks like the very last dinosaurs and the very earliest horses missed each other by about 10 million years. I didn't know that offhand. It would have been really impressive if I did. But but you're right. They were they're more kind of proto horses in what's now North America. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then there weren't for a long time and they were introduced. So they're now considered, they're technically an invasive species. So when Mm -hmm. they talk about wild horses, like wild mustangs, technically they're all feral. So they're all the descendants of domesticated animals that were released either intentionally or unintentionally into the wild. Um, And I, the other part you talked about, about like them roving through and destroying towns. It's, it's not true. I mean, I mean, in, in that, I don't think that they like, they're not like, west side storing their way through the american west okay like napping at people and and dancing in group formation and little roving gangs but they are really terrible for the environment okay uh, their feet horses pack more pounds of pressure per square inch with their hooves than a steamroller does oh, wow. uh, yeah they're really heavy animals they're terribly built they're just god-awful design and pretty bad ui mm-hmm. because they're a ton of weight on really really small surface area so when they walk back and forth across like prairie or shrubland, they cause a lot of damage and dam- and they also eat a ton. So that can get for places that have wild herds that aren't really super well managed. It can be really devastating to the local environment. So that's actually something that we deal with on our property is having to make sure that they don't like we switch out pasture spaces and where we keep them so that they don't compact the ground too much. So stuff can't grow. So that's like a huge issue. And People will talk about, like, there's a lot of debate over the slaughter of wild horses. So they'll round them up and now they get shipped to Mexico for slaughter. Okay. But we don't have a ton. They also adopt them out. They round up a lot of wild horses and adopt them out. Some go to slaughter. But we don't have a lot of other ways of dealing with an animal that has very few natural predators and causes a insane amount of damage to the environment. I see. When it comes to riding, you're talking about them being mostly agreeable. And mm-hmm. I don't. There are days when I think that would be true. Some days, not so much. I think people think about horses as just like big dogs. Mm -hmm. And they're definitely not that. They're a prey animal. So the way they interact with you is really different. And the way that they learn and process things is really different. So most like horses tend to be really flighty. So they talk about horses spooking. Mm -hmm. Most horses will spook at most things. The stuff they spook at is nonsense. Like I have my horse Squidward who is Mm -hmm. a wonderful, she's not, she's 1100 pounds of trash bag, but she's not very, she's not very spooky. She's really a cool horse. She's not afraid of very many things, but then every once in a while, like it'll be literally her own shadow. Or one time we were on a trail and like her tail whacked her in the side and like, babe, you've seen like bears. You don't need to be worried about (laughs) your, we just got this giant inflatable horse just to mess with them to see what they would do. And all the horses were wigged out except for Squidward because she thought she could eat by it and might have food. I agree with you on the breeches. I live in riding pants Mm because I do like, I also have like very substantial muscular thighs Mm -hmm. and I, I'm a hundred percent on board with the riding pants. I use riding leggings, which are cheaper and the most comfortable thing ever. And they tend to have pockets. Ooh, very smart. Yeah, I... I, I had not heard of those. Yeah, they're wonderful. I just got some for Hanukkah. Nice. Thank you. I'm trying to think what else I'm addressing with your. Do you feel like there's anything that you had questions about that you weren't 100% sure on? Yeah. So I've spoken to somebody previously about rodeos. You spoke about the kind of the wild horses being sent down to Mexico for slaughter. Are there instances where you know, I think that there's that old narrative of the wild horse being broken and then becoming best friends with the cowboy or whatever. Is there any truth to that? Or is there like a dynamic oh. where the horse would be sent to like a rodeo because they could promote it as like, we have this wild horse in our show. So 
yes and no rodeo specifically even for the bucking horses like for saddle broncs and stuff like that they're looking for that horse still has to be manageable so those horses are usually bred to do a good job at that so i see able to walk on a halter and a lead rope which is like a horse version of a collar and a leash for your dog Mm -hmm. they still need to be able you have to be able to put them in a trailer to take them to different shows the horses that the that they round up the mustangs have no experience with people so they get too stressed out you couldn't just take a wild horse and drop it in that environment but they do these really cool things called mustang makeovers okay so people can just you can not everybody people can just adopt a mustang but they also do these big events called mustang makeovers where everybody gets a mustang and they get a certain amount of time to work with it and then they see who can do the most with it in that time frame there's actually a there, or it was on netflix there's a documentary about it i'm forgetting the name of it now but everybody gets a mustang and the stuff they can do with them is amazing my favorite if you look it up on youtube there's a guy who teaches her his mustangs to ride in cars Sweet. like it's 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 so cool they do more with these mustangs that have never seen a human being in 90 days than like my herd of trash bags does in a year that's wild Uh, yeah it's it's so cool they're not genetically any different than like a regular horse they have different dispositions they're just a different breed but they're not untamable so you definitely see people i know a ton of people who have awesome mustangs who were at one point wild and are now really cool awesome working horses. That's great to hear. I'm glad that that's able to happen for them. Yeah, it is really cool. It's And it's cool to see what people do with them too. That's awesome. When when did you start in on horses? Was that something with your family or was it something you got into later in life? I started riding when I was eight, I think. Okay. And then my mom got into it and she showed Morgan horses, mm-hmm. which is a, a cool breed of horse. But then I was out of it for a while, like when I went to college and got back into it when I came back to Colorado. But it's always been something I've been passionate about absolutely that's that's fantastic and you said you had how many horses we have six right now i think it's six i can see six right now so i hope it's six (laughs) okay okay (laughs) yeah who knows a new one may may have stumbled in just like oh this seems like a good place to hang out yeah Uh, it feels like a rounding error but that's a lot of animal meat to go missing yeah or to show up absolutely yeah whole new dynamic to care for how has that been having that many horses? Is it kind of difficult on a daily basis? Is there a lot of management that goes into it? I would imagine. It's a ton of work and management. I was thinking that the other day I made a TikTok that I haven't released yet, but probably will have by the time this goes out. Mm-hmm. We had, when we got hit by that big polar storm, mm-hmm. I was out there every couple of hours bringing warm water and feeding and putting out extra food and mucking stalls. And I was like, if you don't want to be out in negative 10 degree weather at three in the morning, like if you're not going to get up and go feed these animals, then horses may not be the pet for you. It is, I really enjoy it. I like the time that I spend with them, but it is a lifestyle choice, especially having them at your house and not boarding them elsewhere. It's not, it's not like a dog. It's a little less portable and it's a little less easy to find a place to just send it to friends or wherever. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing in New York City. There's the hidden stables in New York City where yeah. you can get shown to these stables. But in most places, if there's stables, it's clear that they're around. It's clear where they are. It's clear that there's the infrastructure for the horses and for the animals. Whereas here, it's they really, really kind of manufacture it or get them brought into the city if they're going to be used or what have you. I would. I love driving. I do carriage driving. Mm-hmm. And I would love to drive in New York. I think that would be so much fun. You have to get a license. It's like a whole thing, but it would be so much fun to drive a carriage there. Absolutely. I mean, there's instances where I think that if you're in New York City and we talk to the right guy, I think we can we can get that done. Say they fake a heart attack, the carriage driver, and you take over. So, so you... yeah, a hundred percent. When I was in, I was doing shows at Zany's Nashville, mm-hmm. and the booker there, who's a good friend of mine, the the people who own Zany's Nashville brought have an orchard and they have a mini horse. And so the Zany's booker and I went to the orchard, and one of the staff members there was like, "Oh, well, we'll take you like on a mini horse." carriage ride like they have a little cart for their mini horse and I was like that'll be so much fun and then she got called away to do something else but we had been talking about horses I helped her like tack the horse up to take it on the carriage ride and she's like you seem like what you're doing like you can you can just take her for a spin so I ended up taking Lucy the booker 
we went on a, a mini horse carriage expedition and she was roasting me the entire time for just seeming like someone who had an air of mini horse authority about me enough <laughs> to be a stranger take this horse for a drive oh that's fantastic that's that okay. sounds like that was a lot of fun yeah so i have a i have a track record of yes that sounds like something we could do perfect fantastic if people wanted to learn more about horses or more about you where would you recommend they look my horses are actually famous on tiktok okay they can check us out there at my full name hayden that's my dog pinky help at hayden crystal just my full name on everything okay if they want to learn more about horses i would google riding schools near you excellent be out. there's so much to learn it's more than you can just like wikipedia absolutely Absolutely. Hayden, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I feel like I learned quite a bit and I had a lot of fun. Me too, to both counts. You have like radio authority voice. That's the, have, that, it's the danger of it. <laughs> yeah. You have like resting NPR voice. Yeah. Resting NPR voice is a very good descriptor. I meant it as a compliment and as a roast. Absolutely. It's, I, I love it. I'm going to use it in promo. <laughs> the highest honor I could receive. Thank you so much. Fantastic. My name is Matt Stores, and this has been Matt's Planning.